Fournette. Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And I woke up this morning thinking of an interesting topic to make a video about because it may be just a little bit more realistic than you think. And that question that I'm going to be posing today and answering is, have the Jaguar players turned their back on Doug Marone, the coaching staff, as well as the front office? We're going to be giving you some details on why I think that may be true and maybe some to pose the contrary. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's hop right into the video. I am Treep from Treep Talks and this is, have the Jaguar players turned their back on the front office? Alright, so the, the reason this whole debate sparked into my mind was because of Jalen Ramsey's tweets uh, yesterday saying that we are going to miss him when he's gone, though we do not know 110% if that is alluding to football and the Jaguars. But this is not on the only Twitter incident that the Jags have had. You know, there have been multiple players that have tweeted multiple cryptic tweets uh, directed or, you know, indirectly or directed to the Jaguars, and Jalen Ramsey is just the most recent case of that statistic. I mean, you got guys like Dante Fowler when he was on the team. He would always post weird things on Instagram and weird things on Twitter as well. You know, there's a lot of guys that'll go on Twitter and say certain things, but we never know 100% if it's completely Jaguar-related unless it is, in fact, stated in said tweet, Instagram post, anything like that. So that's why I always think that Jalen Ramsey saying that may be a little bit of an overreaction to some if they keep on believing that it is actually a direct shot at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Also being said, we're going to be discussing the AJ Boye situation as I load up my notes here for y'all. Um, so the AJ Boye situation basically this week was that he did not tell Doug Marone or any of the coaching staff that he wasn't going to play. How they found out about him not playing was through the local media. The media asked him, are you playing this week? He said no. Doug Marone came up to do his press conference and talk about A.J. Boye and the fact that he's not playing. And he comes up and says, that's news to me. You know, if you have super respect for your coach or if you have respect for... For the front office, you know, that's the first person you tell is the coach, the coordinator, your position coach, that, hey, I'm not going to be good to go this week. You don't tell the media before you tell your coaches. That's just kind of a rule in the NFL and a rule as a football player. However, A.J. Boye did not do that. Those two corners with Jalen Ramsey and A.J. Boye are kind of the two catalysts right now that I think that the Jaguars may be turning their back on this team. Whether it be for injuries or it actually is turning their back on the front office. Now another key piece to this puzzle on why I think this could be true that they're turning their back on the front office and coaching staff as well is the pure effort level that they are giving out there. Kelvin Smith taking the biggest step back out of any player in the NFL. And like we heard multiple times uh, last week, this week against the Colts, we have been the most depressing team to watch this season. From AFC Championship, from the gutter to AFC Championship game, straight back to the gutter. The effort level of all these superstars have been very, very low. Same AJ Boye, Jalen Ramsey. Everybody has took a step back this year. There's not a lot of players that have taken steps forward, with the exception of maybe D.D. Westbrook. I think this is a big step forward in Dante Moncrief's career. Um, I think he's really close to getting a career high in receiving yards. So, you know, those two, yeah, I get it, but still they are not stepping up in a big enough way to make an impact. Now, could Leonard Fournette also be doing this? Because maybe he could have came back sooner than he wanted to, or maybe he did it to prove a point that this Jaguar team cannot win without him, which was very, very evident, and now I guess we can't win with him either. So, Now, the reason I would think that the Jaguars are turning their back on the coaching staff 
in the front office is because of just how stubborn all of them are as coordinators, as coaches, as a front office. Dave Caldwell has done really bad recently in the draft. In fact, ever since he's really stepped in. You look at guys that he has drafted, and there's a couple of guys that pop out like, oh, they could do something. Dave Caldwell is better in the later rounds than first round selections. Taven Bryan has not done anything this year. Leonard Fournette has been an injury problem. We could have addressed the quarterback position, drafting either Patrick Mahomes or Deshaun Watson in that year's draft. Um, there was a lot of glaring holes, and there's always been at the quarterback position. Now this may be them saying, if you guys aren't willing to change, then we aren't going to play good football for you. You know, and that's the same thing with the coordinators. Look at Todd Wash. Todd Wash is adamant about running this zone defense that just does not work week in and week out, and he will not switch it up to play to the player's strength. And that will, if you are a player and you're running this crappy zone coverage on certain situations, that's going to bug you. That's going to get to you. And I think that might be what's going on inside the Jaguars locker room right now. Same thing with the offense. <clears throat> the offense without Leonard Fournette is pass, 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 negative one yard run, pass, pass, pass. We're throwing the ball an insane amount of times for Blake Bortles to be throwing the ball. And when Leonard Fournette's in there, it's run, lose a yard, run, gain two or three, pass, three and out, etc. You know, it's the same wash, rinse, and repeat method for both of these coordinators. And if you are a player in that situation, you're obviously going to get angry and you're obviously going to want something to change. So thus turning your back on the organization. Also, I think that Doug Marone, Dave Caldwell, and Tom Coughlin, all three of them really need to just get off the Bortles hype train. You know, it's worse than the guy that you're arguing with on Twitter now. Like, I used to be the guy you argued with on Twitter about Blake Bortles, but I'm not that guy anymore. People will go on there and defend this boy till the cows come home. <clears throat> Still bringing up the fact he took us to an AFC championship game. But when you have this quarterback that has the most turnovers in however five-year span that he has, and you have not moved on from him, or you haven't benched him for Kessler. Dude, when Cody Kessler came in in that Texans game, did you see the emotion change on that team? I honestly think if you got Cody Kessler in there, maybe they would have tried harder. Whether that is a direct upgrade from Blake Bortles is to be debated. I personally don't think it really is. Obviously, the guy doesn't really have the experience. But it would change the situation and the morale in the locker room to show that you are going to be able to bl bench Blake Bortles and you are wanting to win. But with how stubborn this front office is, with how stubborn this coaching staff is, Doug Marone as well being stubborn, have the Jaguars turn their back on the coaching staff and the front office. Now maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I definitely, definitely think it's a possibility. What do you guys think? Do you think the Jaguars players have officially turned their back on not only the coaching staff, but the front office as well? And that was, have the Jaguars turned their back on the front office and the coaching staff? What do you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Trevon Pixley. And follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley. Also, if you're feeling oh so generous, you can donate on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Treep Talks. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. Them's are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great day.